Welcome to Electron Line. You may be curious about why the radiation curve looks the way it does. Well, there's actually a good answer for that. This curve here, even though it kind of looks like a radiation curve, is actually the distribution curve of the velocities of molecules in a gas, and it's called the Stefan Boltzmann velocity distribution curve. And there's a peak to it, just like the radiation curve, and at the peak, this is what we call the most probable velocity of molecules in a gas. And of course, stars, they basically are gases. They're made up of gas. Of course, we call them plasmas because they've been superheated to the point where most electrons have been stripped away from the nuclei. But nevertheless, they behave kind of like a gas. And so there's going to be a certain number of molecules that have very low velocities and probably doesn't go all the way to zero. It probably curves in like this. That's probably a better representation. And they reach a maximum number of molecules will have this particular velocity. They call that the most probable velocity. The average velocity is a little bit to the right of that peak, and then we also call it the root mean square velocity. We don't need to know what those things are because that's more of physics terms, but at least for your reference, there's different kinds of velocities related to a velocity curve like that. Also, you have to realize that each atom or each molecule, and typically it would be atom because at those temperatures you wouldn't have molecules, you would have individual atoms. Each atom of the gas would have a kinetic energy of one half mv squared, which means that the energy contained within the atom uh, depends upon the square of the velocity. You double the velocity four times the energy, triple the velocity nine times the energy. So you can see that in the distribution there's some molecules that are traveling quite fast, therefore carry much higher velocities. And so the agitation of those atoms going back and forth, hitting each other and bumping around like that at these high velocities would cause large accelerations. Accelerations of course would cause electromagnetic radiation to be emitted. So it's again the thermal action of the atoms in the gas that cause that electromagnetic radiation and you can see that there's a very close relationship between the velocity curve and the radiation curve. Therefore the similarity again, high moving uh, atoms would cause higher energy radiation, shorter wavelengths, higher frequencies and again we have that nice relationship between them. Also notice that as the velocities double if the temperature goes up and the velocity increases, then you'd also expect much higher radiation, much higher intensity, and therefore our, our radiation curve increases a great deal with increasing velocity, in part because of the increased velocity means a much higher uh, energy and therefore a much higher radiation curve or radiation band. So there we go, the relationship between Stefan Boltzmann's velocity curve and the radiation curve. And also what we'll see in the next video, there's a relationship between the Stephens Boltzmann's law of the radiation intensity relative to the size and the temperature of the object. Just like Wien, Stefan and Boltzmann also came up with some very interesting relationships between temperature and radiation from stars. So you'll see that in the next video.